shell just fell. <laughs> and I tried to catch it with my hand and now I'm gonna have a big bruise. And all my books fell. Thankfully nothing hit my cello. But now all the books are here. Yep. <laughs> I think this is probably a good time to get an actual bookshelf in here. Also, look what came today. Oh my gosh, it's absolutely stunning. So excited. I think without. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I am squealing. <laughs> that is so sick. Wow. So excited to start this for the Dark Academics Book Club. Ugh. Okay, I think I'm gonna start this after I... Maybe while I read After Dark because... Yeah, it's almost June 1st and I want to read this for the Myth Take. Um, read a phone as well. The Make Your Myth Taker. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Okay, so we found this in the garage and we're gonna paint it. Um, and then I'm gonna put everything that was on there, <laughs> namely all of these books, onto here. Yay! Okay, so I'll do a little maybe bookshelf tour or something, I don't know, but um, this was in my garage and then my mom very kindly painted it for me and made it all looking nice because it was so old, um, so she painted it this really pretty color. Thank you, mom. <laughs> I love it. Um, so all my books are kind of just sitting here for right now, I guess. Um, on the top, I do have the Penguin English Libraries that I have, so Dracula, Dickens, and Wuthering Heights. I really want to read Wuthering Heights every time I talk about it. I don't know why. I just don't start it right now, but they're just sitting here for now. And then down here is kind of all the books that I either brought with me when I came to my parents' house from my apartment um, for the time being that I'm here or that you guys have sent me, which is ridiculous. You guys are literally um, building my library, my quarantine library while I'm here and I'm so thankful for that because I was running out of reads. So thank you so much. I'll go more into this in a second. And then down here are books that were either already in my room or books that I'm planning to donate to secondhand bookshops, charity shops, whatever that I'll go over in a, in a second. Okay, so this shelf I just have organized really weirdly, like we have two non-fiction and then I just organized kind of classics, uh, maybe to here, just chronologically because that's how I do it at, at my apartment, so I guess I just kept doing it. So we start with obviously Sappho, we have the two gothics, Dickens, Oscar, Steppenwolf, Borges, um, this really stunning copy of The Master Margarita that I'm still not over. Look how stunning that is. Oh my gosh, so excited. Um, Mishima, uh, my, my favorite, my favorite, literally my favorite, love it. Um, Anne Carson is here again. <laughs> Obviously The Silence of the Girls, I just threw it here because why not? And then we move into like, we have a middle grade, young adults. I can never really choose if Sarah J. Mass's books are young adult or not. I Someone told me they were and then someone told me they were adults, but I've just never looked it up. Um, I did get A Court of Mist and Fury. It finally arrived. I don't think I told you guys, but um, very long. So this will just, you know, sometimes you want the garbage. Sometimes you want to read the garbage. Um, and then Good Omens, The Book Thief, and then another nonfiction, which is my dad's book, but it's just here until I film my wrap up, so. And then down here we start with my literally torn apart, it's ripped in half, the compendium of Edgar Allan Poe's work. Um, some of these books, a lot of them actually, I'm going to be donating, but they're just here for now, because obviously I can't go anywhere. <laughs> um, this one's going 15 dogs. I might give the Sherlock Holmes uh, another go, even though it's not by Doyle, but we'll see. Um, this is one of the science books I have. This is all just organized alphabetically, and it's pure chaos. Um, this is going. Summer and Bird is going. I might give the Queen of the Night another chance. I think the audiobook narrator just really put me off, so maybe I'll try reading it. These are obviously staying. <laughs> I love the Hunger Games. Um, this is... This is a really old book of Sherlock Holmes I have that I love. Oh my gosh, guys, this is going. Why is this book still in the vlog? It's been like months. 
Um, people always comment every time I show this this book. Like, I don't know, it's just a thing now. Um, the Fault in Our Stars is going... I, I want to keep The Summer I Turn Pretty, I think. Like, it's not a good book, and it's kind of... I don't know. But um, I used to read, like this series by Jenny Han, who also did um, To All the Boys I Loved Before. I used to read this every time I would go to a cottage up north, and then I would like read one book in the series each summer. That was like, that was my prime young adult years. Um, and we have like other random non-fiction books. The Oxford Inheritance is a dark academia that I would advise you not to read. It's not good, <laughs> um, and I'm gonna be getting rid of it. Then we have more science, um, One Day, which is uh, kind of a bad romance. We have randomly The Sea of Monsters. Um, I've only read up to The Sea of Monsters in the Percy Jackson series. I'm sorry. I might one day read them all. I don't know. The poems. Oh my gosh. This is a series I want to reread and see what I would think about it now. The Immortal, The Secrets of the Immortal Nicholas Flamel by... <laughs> Michael Scott. I'm sorry, I'm never gonna live that down. He's never gonna live that down. Um, I really remember loving that series, so um, I would like to read it again. We have this random book one. Is this book one of the Fairy Queen? Yeah. Um, which I now have in full, so I'm gonna donate this one. This one's kind of, you know, it's kind of cool looking, very old, but um, I just don't need it, so. The Burning Sky, I might get rid of that. Emma in the Night, I'm gonna get rid of because I don't like contemporary young adult at all. We have this random translation of the Odyssey. And then we have, guys, this is like where I trace back my love of ancient Egypt too. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else has read the Magic Tree House books, but um, Mummies in the Morning was one of my favorites when I was younger. I have like so many of them in the basement, but I saw this one and I had to bring it up because, um, yeah, I don't know. It's just very cool because there's also other ones about the Greeks and the Romans and <laughs> obviously ancient Egypt and I was like, wow, the, the Mary Pope Osborne fueled my classical studies degree. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so yeah, that is that for now. I still have random books in the wardrobe, but um, for now this is, this is her. This is her. She's cute. <laughs> Um, okay, so let's do some reading updates. I feel like these vlogs have been just like all over the place recently also because um, They haven't been like syncing up with the week that I've been uploading them and I just have so much footage now So by the time you're watching this, I have no idea what I've been able to get out, but today is May 31st Tomorrow is the start of June, which means that it's the start of the Myth Take Readathon or the Make Your Myth Taker Readathon, hosted by Ashley over at Frolic Through Fiction and Charlotte over at Beige Pages. Nope, that's her Instagram handle. Her YouTube channel is bookmarks and vlogging. My bad. Um, so basically, if you haven't heard of that readathon, you get to kind of create your own character. Very, very cool. Um, there's like four categories. There's rogue, royal court, warrior, and is it sorcerer? It might be sorcerer. Anyway, I went with rogue, and then within those categories, you can choose like 
more nuanced um, characters, so I went with Assassin. So first things first, I wanted to go over my TBR and <laughs> let you guys know what I'm reading. So um, there's a prompt to read a friend pick or a book that a friend picked with you. So I am going to be reading Ninth House for that prompt by Lee Bardugo, obviously, because my friends in the Dark Academics book club have recommended me to read this book because it's our June book of the month. So this just worked out really perfectly. Um, I know I've seen so many people on our Instagram account saying how excited they are about this one because um, I think along with Silence of the Girls and Ninth House, I think they're both very kind of not really controversial, but like people have a lot of different opinions about them, uh, especially because Ninth House is like a dark academic book in and of itself. It's set at Yale University. We're following this girl named Alex um, and she, I think she's tasked with monitoring the secret societies of Yale who put out like very famous politicians, very influential uh, people in the world. So she's tasked with like monitoring their, their comings and goings and workings. Um, and then I believe a girl ends up dead on the campus because they always do and um, we go from there. It's quite a lengthy book. I am so excited. I am 10 pages through because I just, I really wanted to start it and it's going to take me forever to read because of my brain. So um, this cover, I think I showed you guys already, but it's just so, I'm obsessed. Whoever designed this, you did, did a good job. In terms of Lee Bardugo alone, I have read her Shadow and Bone series. I've also read uh, Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom, the duology. It, it was just fine. Like, I feel like I'm not, I'm obviously not holding her to the expectations of her young adult fantasy series. Um, I think this is going to be like so different and I'm so ready to just go in with a hugely open mind. Um, and I'm so excited. It's been a while since I've read a Dark Academia book. Um, that was like Dark Academia in and of itself. I think the last one I read was Oh, what am I saying? Truly devious. But like that doesn't really count because I don't know. This is like number one priority for June. Next prompt was to read a book with a dark cover. So for that prompt I picked Warlights by Michael Ondaatje, I believe is how you pronounce it. Um, I think he, yeah, he is Canadian and Sri Lankan. Um, he's pretty famous, I think, at the moment. And I chose Warlight because it's it sounded like a super, super cool historical fiction story. I know we're following these two siblings um, during World War II, uh, and I believe they have to stay with this very enigmatic character, very kind of, not necessarily shady, but just very mysterious because he's called the Moth in the synopsis that I read. I don't think he's given any other name. Um, and while they're staying with him during the war and kind of the last years of the Second World War, I believe things start to happen, not necessarily war related, but like probably, um, and very mysterious things happen surrounding this moth character that they're living with and a whole host of other mysterious kind of troops. I don't know, when I read the synopsis, I ca it kind of felt like a series of unfortunate events um, like, not at all. I don't know why I immediately pictured, like, Count Olaf as the moth and, like, his kind of theater troupe as the, you know, surrounding cast of characters. I don't know. Um, I've never read Michael Ondaatje's work, so this is gonna be very exciting. The next prompt for the assassin was to read a secret book, so that means I can't tell you what that book is. <laughs> Sorry. Although if I'm doing reading vlogs and you see a mysterious book that I haven't mentioned pop up, that will most likely be the book, so there you go, but I'm not going to tell you at the moment. Um, and finally, the last prompt for the assassin in the Make Your Myth Take a Readathon, a quick read. So I decided to put on um, Autobiography of Red by Anne Carson, a novel in verse. Um, this was very kindly gifted to me by Ren. Um, I'll put her Instagram and everything down below. She, I think she also has a booktube channel. She definitely also has a book channel, um, which is amazing. So thank you so much. You guys know, I, yeah, I just talk about Anne Carson every chance I can get. So this was a pretty short book, almost 150 pages. It's a lot of poetry, but it is also considered a novel about this young boy, um, and he's writing his own autobiography, obviously, but he's also a red winged monster. He tells a story about how he escapes his abusive brother and his bad relationships with his mom and eventually he goes off to find solace of some sorts but I think not really in the arms of his lover Heracles. So Autobiography of Red is a profoundly moving portrait of an artist coming to terms with the fantastic accident of who he is. 
Oh. Yeah, I think this is the book. No, I don't know. They're, they're just all good books. Um, I'm so excited for this TBR. So excited for this readathon. If you guys are participating, feel free to leave your your TBR down below. I would love to know. And also, like, what character you created. Um, Anne Carson, also Canadian. This is just the Canadian TBR. We love it. I should make, like, a Canadian readathon where we all have to chug maple syrup every time we finish a book. Okay, yeah, so this is part of my TBR along with Warlight and that other mystery book that I'm not gonna say. So, I'm very excited to get into these, especially 9,000. Oh my gosh. And in terms of what I am reading, I'm now 92 pages through After Dark by Murakami. Um, still just so in love with it. Um, I think it, it's probably going to rank at the top tier of Murakami books I read, along with Wind Up Bird Chronicle, obviously. I think that's probably, it might be his best work ever, but <laughs> I haven't read all of his works, obviously, and he has a lot, but um, that's just my personal opinion. It's just, it's just so good. Like, I don't really want to talk about the plot a lot because it's a very big mishmash up of encounters between people in the night. Um, I think one of our main characters is Mary and she's basically just this very lonely girl. She has a sister who's a model, um, and she sits in Denny's at 2 a.m. trying to read books and get away from her family. Um, and then she gets kind of tangled up in this encounter with this kind of love hotel after the manager at the Love Hotel um, comes into Denny's asking if anyone speaks Chinese because a Chinese girl was just beat up by um, the salary man who kind of hired her for the night so Mary has to go because she speaks Chinese um, and kind of translate what happened in this event um, and now she's staying at a different Love Hotel for the night because she's made friends with the manager um, we're also following this other guy named Takahashi he plays the trombone uh, he mansplains to Mary about jazz for a long while, which is really funny, and Murakami, like, knows intentionally what he's doing. It's really funny. Um, it's literally, it's literally just that scene from the B movie where he's like, you like jazz? Um, so now we're following the manager and her two employees as they try and track down this terrible man who beat up, um, the girl and basically bring him to, to justice. So... Um, that is where we're at with that. It is currently 2.19 a.m. in the book. Um, I'm gonna wait until probably the sun sets to read more, even though this, this method, this approach is taking me quite a while, but honestly, it's not a very long book, so I will just kind of cherish all the time that I'm allowed to spend in Inside Murakami's world, so, yes. <laughs> Yesterday, one of my absolute best friends in the world also made me these earrings. Guys, she made me these ladybug earrings, and they are like... The absolute sweetest cutest thing ever I love them so much <laughs> look at look at them they're so cute hi guys so I just got off our first dark academics live show discussing the sounds of the girls um thank you <laughs> Thank you to everyone who watched. If you're watching now, you can go back and watch it. It's on Kira's channel, but um, that was so great. We had such a good time chatting and talking to you guys. It's a little bit like surreal and um, discussing this book was amazing and now I can finally put it back in my new bookshelf. So yeah, I just wanted to say thank you. I had such a good positive time. It was really nice being able to forget about my concussion for a little bit, even though I'm probably gonna face some consequences tonight because I looked at a screen for an hour <laughs> um, but I'm trying not to think about that and just think about how fun it was and how amazing um, and I'm so glad I got to do it with so many amazing people um, you all included so that was so much fun and I can't wait for ninth house because uh, I just started it last night and yeah I have a lot of things to update you guys on um, just in every realm of life <laughs> But um, it's almost five o'clock today is oh it is five o'clock. Yeah, I'm gonna make some dinner because I was really nervous for the live show and I didn't eat and now it's five o'clock and my tummy's pretty hungry, so um that's what I'm gonna do and then I will talk to you guys later.
Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Good morning. Good morning welcome to the weekend <laughs> yeah so today is saturday there's a few things i want to do today number one i want to unearth my cello from the bowels of the basement where it has resided for it might be over a year now which i feel really bad about um i don't really talk about I don't really talk about music a lot. For a number of years, it was an even bigger part of my life than books and writing and um, literature was. My main instrument was the flute, um, which unfortunately I don't have here at my parents' house, but my cello is here. So I would like to bust it out again. Um, I think I have to restring one of the strings. It might be, I don't think it's the A string. I feel like it's the D string. I don't know, we will see. I would love to just see um, what is up with the cello and uh, tune it up, fix it up, and just see how that goes. I would love to read a lot more of After Dark tonight. Like I said, I've been trying to read it all at night, um, so we'll see. Want to make? I want to make some more oat balls or something. I don't know. Okay. Hi. How are you? Not what you want to hear. Okay, so it's actually it's actually the G string. That's not what we want to see. <laughs> that is not what you want to hear. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I fixed the G string. We gonna tune it. Let's find a tuner. I've lost the tuner, so we're just gonna do this by ear, I guess. You know what? Fine. Yeah, so this is supposed to be a G. It's tuning like two whole tones lower than that. <laughs> scared messing with the tuning pegs um but like that's almost oh, it hurts okay hi guys so i just came out here oof, to read a little little bit of ninth house i'm really not far through this um i've been considering doing a whole reading vlog dedicated to just my experience reading this book it would take a pretty long time because <laughs> with my concussion this is the book that I've elected to read with my own eyeballs so it would probably take a while for that to be up I also got my peppermint tea <laughs> my water my book uh, and I also started another audiobook that I want to talk about so I also started uh, City of Girls by Elizabeth Gilbert which is historical fiction set in 1940 New York um, it's really good it's really good so far I'm almost halfway through actually which is crazy because I just started it yesterday but um, I'll probably let you know more of my thoughts on that very soon but for right now the atmosphere is just incredible and um, I'm enjoying it so much I basically went in um, not really knowing what the plot was about but I'm really loving it things just got very dark out here all of a sudden I feel like a storm is coming or something. I gotta say my initial thoughts are that I'm absolutely in love with it I'm adoring it um, it opens so wackily like the first chapter after the prologue um, we're basically in like this we're obviously at Yale University but we're in this like very strange 
room um, that's kind of in between two rooms, which liminal spaces, am I right? So um, basically, Alex, our main character, is having to watch something called the pro prog the prognostication, um, where basically these these secret society men, the Bonesmen, in this case, one of the houses. Um, basically rifle through this dude's bowels to predict the future, kind of like an auger or something, but it's on a human, uh, human being's bowels, and it's so interesting. Uh, there's ghosts and supernatural things abounding every, every hack and corner, so yeah, I just love it. It seems so far like almost every single sentence is chock full of something, whether like a reference or just really nice wording or something that advances the story and makes you kind of go, wow, what are we talking about? Which is very gripping and love it. I tabbed this one part that I really loved because it reminded me of After Dark. I'll just read this one little sentence, so. The campus had a way of changing faces from hour to hour and block to block so that Alex always felt as if she were meeting it for the first time. Tonight, it was a sleepwalker, breathing deep and even. The people she passed on her way to SSS seemed locked in a dream, soft-eyed, faces turned to one another, steam rising off the cups of coffee in their gloved hands. She had the eerie sense that they were dreaming her, a girl in a dark coat who would disappear when they woke. Love it. Um, I think the atmosphere is going to be kind of thick <laughs> in night though, so... Um, those are my 22 page in thoughts. Okay, so it is a little bit later now. I've gotten dressed. It's actually like 7.30, so, you know, it was high time. Um, I thought I would sit down and give you guys some reading updates. Um, I am currently reading four books, so let us discuss. Um, the first one I want to talk about for a little bit is a nonfiction, another nonfiction that I've started. This one, I can't remember if I've mentioned it or not, is called The Vietnam War An Intimate History by Jeffrey C. Ward. Um, this is the Vietnam history book that was, it was like, um, what was it? It was made into a documentary, or Okay, wait, let me, let me rephrase this. There was a documentary about the Vietnam War called the Vietnam War. Um, and then they decided to make it into a book format, so that is what I am currently listening to via audiobook. Uh, it's amazing. It's a book I would recommend to everyone and anyone. Uh, it's a very hard book to listen to, very hard book to read. Um, there's lots of times that I have to stop and go do something else, take a break from it, but uh, always obviously come back and continue to listen to it. There is a lot of anger when I think about it, um, and it's a very unsettling experience because where do you, where do you put that anger now? Um, I think it's an important topic to talk about too because the Vietnam War is not over. Um, it, for so many reasons, in so many ways. It's not over for Vietnam, it's not over for the soldiers who are still alive today, it's not over for the American government and what they continue to do um, today. That's something I wanted to talk about too. It is absolutely crazy to be reading a book about the Vietnam War, um, and this book is amazing. So for a second it starts off much earlier than the 1960s or 1950s. It begins actually World War I um, and the background of Vietnam and what France was doing there and then how World War I, World War II and the Korean War eventually escalated and all of these kind of back histories and back logs of just time um, and what was basically going on in Vietnam then and uh, up until obviously the, uh, the withdrawal of American forces from Vietnam when the war Ended. I knew a little bit about the Vietnam War, but um, to read this book, and first of all, like I was saying earlier, um, to see how badly America, all of the presidents who were who were dealing with this, Eisenhower to Kennedy to uh, Johnson, <laughs> Johnson for sure, um, what they did, how they handled it, how this war was waged, um, is mind-boggling. The misinformation the lies, the blatant deception of the American government at this time, and obviously still today, um, is just wow. It's also nice because this book um, 
presents you biased information without bias, um, which I think is about as good as we can get in this world, unfortunately. Um, it, it interviews so many people across the globe, from America to Vietnam, a wide, a wide range of ages, people, everything, all of their experiences, all of their narratives and discourse and pain that uh, makes up the Vietnam War. The other thing I want to talk about for a second is that it is absolutely... It's not even conceivable that I'm currently reading a book about the Vietnam War which details a lot of the anti-war movement but also Martin Luther King and everything that was going on for him and black people in America at that time to read that, which is also a very important piece, and I'm so glad that they included it and so glad they, that they give you a lot of information about that. Because Martin Luther King was obviously also very vocal about the Vietnam War and America's presence in Vietnam, but to read that, to read about what is being done to black people in America in the 1960s during the Vietnam War, um, and then to pull out my earphones and look around today in June 2020 and um, that experience is one of horrific continuum. Um, it's just absolutely frightening. There's just absolutely nothing I can use to communicate to you about the experience of reading this history book in the 60s uh, and then to look up from from this immaterial book and see the exact same things occurring around you. It's, um... So, that is one of the books I'm currently reading. Um, I'm really, I'm not enjoying it, obviously, but it's so important to read. Um, and, yeah. So, The Vietnam War, An Intimate History by Jeffrey C. Ward. Definitely recommend. The second book I'm reading, I'm still reading After Dark by Murakami. Still absolutely loving it. Um, you guys know I'm also reading Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. I am now... Hoo-hoo, I'm now 28 pages through. Um, I'm still absolutely loving it. Um, I'm very excited to see kind of the relationship between Alex and Darlington, um, whoever he may be. It's kind of her mentor in this system that's been set up um, in order for people to monitor the uh, goings-on of these secret societies and kind of keep them in check. Um, and in this system, um, Darlington is referred to as Virgil, and Alex is Dante, obviously in Dante's Inferno, Virgil is like the mentor of Dante, and that's kind of like the system they operate upon, which is very interesting. Probably gonna read more of this tonight, so yeah. I'm just, this, I'm just, yeah, this cover, every time I hold it up. Ooh. Ooh. The last book I'm reading is City of Girls by Elizabeth Gilbert. Like I said, historical fiction set in 1940s New York. We're following Vivian. She basically gets kicked out of Vassar and her parents' house and shipped off to live with her aunt who runs this very worn down theater in New York called the Lily Playhouse. Um, and basically, there's this whole cast of characters. The atmosphere in this book too, I think I've already said, is superb. But they're putting on this play called City of Girls um, and it's just, it's really, really good, you guys. It's so good. You have like Second World War going on. America isn't involved, really, yet. Um, and you have like just so much atmosphere, so many famous people, so many actors, musicians, jazz players, jazz artists. Um, it's just like this incredibly populated world, and obviously it is because 1940s New York is a real place. We can go there in our minds. Yeah, it's just, it's really, really good, so I'd recommend that too, but that is everything I'm reading right now. I'm also just about to play the cello for a few minutes because um, I finally got into it. I'll probably have to tune it again. Let's see. You know what? It could be worse. I don't think I really talked about the cello a lot the other day when I finally unearthed it, but um, I play a lot of instruments, although I don't play them super frequently now. It's been a uh, it's been a while since I played the cello, but I've been practicing pretty often, almost every day these past two weeks. Um, so my main instrument is the flute. Uh, I've been playing the flute for a number of years. I actually almost went to university for music performance, in which I would have pursued, you know, performative flute playing. Um, but my second main instrument would probably be the cello. I got to the cello a bit later in life. Um, still in high school. In high school I was actually a first chair flute, so there you go. Uh, other than that, I play the piccolo, but I don't have a piccolo. <laughs> but 
<laughs> my parents are probably very thankful for that. Um, I also played... Well, I can play a little bit, obviously, of guitar, mostly classical guitar and piano, of course, because, I don't know, those are just kind of, you know, prerequisite instruments. But I also played the baritone saxophone for a little spell, um, which I honestly love. <laughs> I love the baritone saxophone. I wish. I wish I had one. Um, and what else? I think... Is that it? I think that's it. Um, but yeah, I just love the cello so much. Oh my gosh. It's so human. It's such like a cry of, you know, I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. I just really like the cello. <laughs>